you want to pull up their schedule just for one second? You want to just go first reaction, win loss record? Just well, I don't want to do that just yet because last year I nailed it. I got ten and seven, and I want to wait until it's like the order kind of matters. But let's just take a quick look. Let's just take well, a quick look. Because Vegas, Vegas says ten wins. Okay, so let's go. Let's let's yeah. do the Vegas prediction. They say ten wins right now. Yeah. Rams are ten and a half, so they're right. at ten wins right now. So let's look All at their right. schedule. First reaction, pre-draft, that can change, right? You know, they could get a player for Jimmy. They could get a draft pick. We don't know what's going to happen. We, you know, there's a pre and post, but when it comes to just looking at their schedule, and their and schedule you know, brutal. okay, okay, I, you know, me, for I'll go through it real quick, the home the home teams. Obviously, you got the Cardinals, the Rams, and the Seahawks. That's tough. Um, Let's say they win definitely one of those games, maybe all three. But definitely, let's say they beat the Seahawks. Then you got the Saints at home. Not easy. You got the Bucks at home. Not easy. The Chiefs, the Chargers, the Dolphins, and Washington. I mean, I mean, there's like one guaranteed win on that. On that, I mean, they could win all of them. They're home. Okay, so now they'll go away, right? So they're away game. So you got Atlanta, that's winnable. Chicago, winnable. Correct. Correct. Carolina, winnable. But then Correct. you got Denver and L.A. Yikes. Correct. That's a really hard schedule. That so could go away, any different. That could go a lot of different directions. I, I for you know if they go three and three in their division, they essentially, you know, to me if they can do what better away, that's what you're banking on because they're away. Their home schedule is so much harder. And you know what I have seen and you have seen. Their home field means butt kiss. You know what I mean? It does. I mean, literally, on, they have quick, the real, it, it does mean. Hold on, real quick though. So let's say they go three and three in, in the division, which is no guarantee. Let's say they go three and three nope. in the division. Let's say they beat Atlanta, uh, Chicago, and Carolina. That's six and eleven. Yep. And we give them another win, just you know, just to be charitable. That's seven and ten. That could happen, despite happen. having Nick Bosa, Trent Williams, having like what six players in the top thirty. And why could that happen? Because you don't know who your quarterback is, and you just downgraded your offensive line. Why? Well, here's – so my thing is, my secret sauce, you know, conspiracy thing is I think they've got big plans for more, you know, Jalen more, and I think they may slide him into a position like instead of the right, right the left side. They I might think he'll right be the left guard, not Aaron Banks. You can't tell me they all of a sudden like Aaron Banks. Get the hell out of here. They like more. No, and I, and they might put him next to McGlinchey just because of like continuity sake and say, you know, mentor you know him mean? along. Yeah. 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 But I could really see that lot, you know, cause that left side has always, we've taken that for granted. That left side has always been relatively the stronger and now of the position. Gone for the first time and in five years. Gone. Am I wrong? And he's gone. Yeah. He four was years, here for four, five, five years. years. Yeah. It's five years. Yeah. Well, so we'll see yeah. with that. I think clearly the, the Niners are being like, well, Guard doesn't matter. All right, we'll see. We'll see what Aaron and Banks. Does. I also think the 49ers have kind of. I know they do this from a very tactical business model view when it comes wow. to upgrading their team on off season. I think they looked around and they saw, you know, kind of the fireworks before you know free agency, and they turned around. They're like, okay, well, the NFC West or the NFC as a whole got worse. Why do we have to? You kind of buy low, you know what I mean? Why do they yeah. have to struggle so much? Because, you know, their main competition is within their division, right? Yeah. To me, it's right. And then you can't tell me the Packers got better. They did not, no. right? The Dallas Cowboys did not get better, right? No. I mean, they, they played the Cowboys, right? Tampa Bay, okay, they're they're one of the one, two, they're one of the only teams that, frankly, you know, because of Tom Brady coming back, you, you can't like say, okay, that's not a big deal. It's them and the Rams. And Vegas is telling us that the, the Niners are the third best team in that division right now, doing absolutely nothing. They have neither gotten better or worse, right? Pre-draft, they have just sat idle. They got rid of a player, they added a player. It's almost been a like-for-like like strategy because I really don't think they see a sense of urgency because they know they match up well against the Rams and they're banking on Trey doing better than Jimmy. They're banking are they? on the telling Are they? To me, what they're saying is we don't trust Jimmy. But we also don't trust Trey. So why don't we wait a year before we do anything drastic? Is they, kind of the vibe I'm getting. They they don't like um you know we've seen it across the NFL. I think teams are really picking and choosing which way they're gonna go, right? And they draw a hard line, they're either gonna draft a lot of players and, and get those draft picks or start 
trading players and, you know, via free agency and get those picks back. But the 49ers are doing something that's really weird. And that's my third point is like, I really don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if they're trying to be the Patriots or they're trying to be like the pseudo Rams. They're like caught in between and they're like waiting it out. Right. So typically that means nine and, you know, nine and eight, 10 and seven. I'm saying that the same, right. They were 10 and seven last year and they've gotten worse. And their schedule got harder. And they're going to go to a quarterback who hasn't played in two years, and they didn't prepare last year. I mean, what could go wrong, Karan? Uh, They have the potential to win 12, 13 games. No question about it. But they definitely have the potential to win six or seven, too. And I think that's what Jed York was saying. Like, we're not as good as you think. We can be. We certainly can be. But did you see what we did last? Like, we were – we almost lost to Chicago. They lost to Seattle twice, two times. Like you could argue Arizona. that not that great last year. Arizona even worse. I think the Arizona losses were so much worse. Lost to Colt McCoy. You know what I mean? Lost right. to Colt McCoy. You when know what I mean? are committed to playing Debo Samuel at running back full time. I don't know what's going to happen to this team next year. They might decide, you know, after they give him this signing bonus, this five-year, you know, we can't do that anymore. We just can't. So Debo, you get two carries a game and we're going to have to find another way. <gasps> well, that's your, that was your formula for success. Last. They were five and eight. When he had less than 35 rushing yards, five and eight, and undefeated when he had more than 35. So either you're committed just, to that or you have a replacement for it. You go, you know, I as go back. Goes. You know, there, and there's a false sense of security there because, you know, Grant, I watched the NFC Championship game a couple days ago. It was on, I think it was either on Rewind or whatever it was, but, you know, you watch that game in its totality. I was like, man, they really should have won that game. Yes. They had every opportunity to win that game. It was, like given to them, the game should have been, you know, that I know everyone's going to go back to that tart pick, but there were ample opportunities for them to run out the clock. And I think, you know, it goes back to play calling, play management, play style. And and, and Kyle's still not there yet when it comes to game management. He's there you as a play they caller. The championship game? Because they were saving Debo for the Super Bowl. He had 14 touches. That was too much. I don't think they ever gave him more than 14 touches. He had seven carries. Seven catches. That's it. Got to save him for the Super Bowl. He had no touches in the last 13 minutes, and that's hilarious to me. That's what, Dude, I got to take some more calls, but if you want to wrap it up real quick, you're welcome to. With something positive. Please. Something positive. Okay. Um, we still have the draft. There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you, go. you still have the draft. You still it. have the draft. I love you it. You still have the draft. I'll see you later. Hey, thank you for telling that story about Jimmy last week. That, that video went that popped. I appreciate it. It was good. Thank you